Hey, thanks for stopping by Minnesota Black Robe Regiment. Uh, this was a planned but unplanned live, if you will. Um, so make sure you're uh, checking out the bell icon down there if you're if you're subscribed. So you're getting notifications. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Uh, we're going to have a lot of important content coming up in, in uh, days, weeks, and months to come, especially as we head towards this, uh, hopefully, uh, this conservative slash libertarian slash classical liberal uh, in resurgence or uh, wave, if you will, here in Minnesota. I see good things happening if we can capture the momentum that's going on. And that's one of the reasons why um, I have the guests that I have tonight. Uh, I, I have to I have to admit this. I'm not going to be uh, it's not going to be softballs here with with Walt when he comes on. I'm going to be really mean and hard on him uh, because uh, we've known each other for a while now. And uh, Walt can take it. The problem is, is there's probably nothing I really need to be hard on him about just because I know kind of how his brain operates. So if you have any questions, you can ask them in the in the chat and we will see those as they come up. Uh, Walt is Walt Walter uh, Candidate Hudson, if if you prefer, is incredibly sharp. And he he doesn't think about things the way most of your neocon normies in uh, politics do these days. He thinks through them and he thinks about them from a couple of perspectives. And and the most important of that being is it isn't whether or not we should we, we can do something. It's whether or not we should do something, which is why I think he's going to be an, a wonderful asset for the state of Minnesota. So I'm going to bring him in and I want you guys to push this out, share this into your groups, um, your conservative groups um, for your normie con friends, for the, for those of you that still who have friends that still get all of their news from Fox news, uh, make sure they see this uh, because I can guarantee you Walter is going to challenge the norm on this. So Walter, let's see if we can do this. Well, maybe it's not cooperating with me because I'm professional. There we go. Walter, thanks. Thanks for making time for me tonight. I know you're busy campaigning. It's it's Wednesday hump day. There has to be something somewhere you could have been at. Yeah, you know, I'm catching up. I wish I could tell you that I'm doing all sorts of fancy stuff that's um, <laughs> extraordinarily <laughs> impactful, but it's it's really kind of the the nuts and bolts of, you know, putting postcards in the mail and making texts and phone calls, trying to make connections with people who I want to speak to. And it's less at this point, honestly, given the district that I'm in, which is extraordinarily conservative. And now that I've secured the Republican Party endorsement for state representative in my area, I don't want to be too presumptive or, or check or count my chickens before they hatch. But the conventional wisdom is a Republican's going to win in this district. Um, and so it, it's less about campaigning, especially at this point. I mean, it's March yet, right? Uh, and it's much more about starting the actual work of legislating. Even though I'm not yet a legislator, the, the work of being a representative is getting to know your constituency, developing legislative concepts and ideas and plans. Um, and also, you know, to, to the extent that I'm going to be campaigning, it's not going to be limited to my own district. I'm very interested in going into other neighboring districts as well, especially more into the cities, because I think we have an unprecedented opportunity to move the needle uh, inside the urban core, as the uh, political wonks call it, uh, in order to win things statewide for Republicans. Yeah, we I, everything blanked out on my end, so I don't know if you could hear anything I said, but I hope everybody else could hear you. So, so you're put, you're working now is what you're saying is you're, yes. you're, you're working at legislating and, uh, uh, not because you're guaranteed a win, right. But, but because it's, it, it's a safer district did yeah. that, did that happen through redistricting or, or did your district not get touched very much there? No, it got touched fairly significantly. Um, how it got geographically smaller. I'm fairly sure. Hmm. Uh, this this area was, and that's because of the increase in population. This area ha is currently represented by Eric Lucero, and the shape of the district is different, but not entirely unlike it was before. And it has always been a deeply conservative district. 
to the last time around, Lucero won 70 30. Um, and so I would have to re- really screw things up in order to, uh, to end up losing in November. Well, um, which, well, you know, hopefully, it's not hopefully beyond the that realm of possibility. Happen. I mean, here I am on a YouTube live stream, and I you might say anything. Who knows what might happen? And then you're we're getting we're getting uh, some lag on your end. Or however long we're getting we're getting quite a bit of lag from you. We're gonna be. Um, we're getting we're getting some lag on your end. Uh, to me, it's a of- yeah, he dropped out. He'll come back in. So we're gonna we're gonna do this while while Walter's um while Walter's lagging <laughs> and waiting for him to come back in. Um, if you haven't ordered coffee from me, you can you can do that. TC Pearson at protonmail dot com. Oh, hey, Walter's back. I'm not reintroducing you. Sure. I don't know what happened, but you you started lagging and I started filling time. So is it better now? It is it is it better. It's like that old cell phone commercial. Can you yeah, hear right. me now? Yeah, we can. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. We've got some we've got some uh people, some of my friends and fans are watching. And and I say fans in a euphemistic way. We got some people watching. Anybody have a really hard question for Walter? Like, you know, it I, I'll just I'll throw it out there because Walter, Walter will get a kick out of this. Walter, you can't possibly be a conservative Republican type hoping to win a seat in in, in Minnesota. You're black, right? Yes, that's yeah. I mean, it is. Certainly Walter a, and I have history. We did a show together for a while, so it, it's it's probably going to be a head scratcher for some people. But I don't know. At this point, I think we've seen plenty of examples of black conservatives. I mean, you got Candace Owens, um, you know, you've got Clarence Thomas, um, you've got um, I, Alfonso, is that his name? The guy on the blaze. Uh, this is not a, this is not a new shtick by any stretch of the imagination. There are in fact, black conservatives. Um, and and they, they exist in Minnesota. Uh, they exist in Minneapolis. They're all over the place. Um, and they are, they, they slash we, are intentionally sidelined. Um, I was I was featured. I used to get invited to TPT Almanac um, for a brief period of time, and that was back in 2016 when I was briefly skeptical of Donald Trump. So that was attractive to the, the mainstream to have a, a black conservative who was skeptical of Trump. But as soon as I got on board the train and put on the MAGA hat, all that all that I, came to a screeching halt. So um, they, they only want to hear from us if we are helping their narrative. They don't want to listen. They don't want to listen to black people who actually think for themselves and get off of the ideological plantation. Oh, are we lagging again? Now you're the one who's lagging. Man, I'm pretty sure things are good on my end. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, to be honest with now you. Now you're this back. Is, now you're back. Yeah, this, you know, if 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 anybody could just you know, fill in for us. That would be, that would be great. So I, this is, this is not how I've not done a live yet where this has happened. I had Carrie's watching and I had her on uh, last week. I had, uh, had the guys from 22 to zero on, on Monday night and no issues. Now we have you on talking about running for office as a conservative um, in, in, in Minnesota and being black. And all of a sudden now, ironically, we're having problems. I'm not going to say, that that it's on purpose on somebody's end but you know i wouldn't put it past them my friend carrie who is the host of um deprogrammed one of those people that carrie you you and walt would have a great conversation i think you should reach out to him and uh have him on your program because he would uh he would blow your audience away with some of some of his thoughts so carrie wants to know walter what makes a good leader well, a good leader is someone who can articulate that which is true in a way um, that people understand and know, but are grasping at the edges of their perception to be able to articulate uh, and and can lead people 
by actually providing them with a value that they want to follow. Um, good, good leaders are people who are ahead of the pack, but they're, they're not, and they may in fact be saying, come with me, let's come take this hill, come with me if you want to live, right? They may in fact be saying things like that, but it's, it's not a demand, it's not an order, it's an offer, it's an offer of value, and you're pointing people towards the thing that they know they want. Um, and I think that's what's really necessary in this moment. We have a great opportunity here in Minnesota to lead people across party lines to uh, a, a way of governing that is more respectful of the individual, respectful of life, uh, and affirming of our values. Boy, you answered that just like a politician. Yeah, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should look into that. Uh, uh, my friend Lori, uh, literally friend, if this is the Lori, I think it is. Yeah, she's she's kind of up in your neck of the woods, um, kind of closer to you than I am. Lori uh, says we need uniting so badly. Well, so yes. Oh, I knew However, I knew this was gonna I knew this was gonna get you going. <laughs> yes, because yeah, Walt, Walt, Walt and I share some of the same views on this. Yeah, it'd be great to be united, um, but there's a prerequisite to that, right? Uh, I'm not after unity for the sake of unity. I'm after unity around the affirmation of life. And that may sound like a trite political notion, but I, I, I'm implying an entire philosophical system with that statement, right? Um, the, the unity that I want is around individual rights. It's around the capacity to lead your life according to your own values, to rely upon your own judgment, to make your own decisions, because that is what human life requires. The uniqueness of our God-given nature is such that in order to survive, in order to thrive, you know, unlike the animals um, that we find ourselves surrounded with and, and keep in our house, uh, we cannot rely merely on instinct in order to preserve us. We have to actually put our thoughts to the, the problems that we face and come up with or recognize solutions yep. to those problems and then decide to take the action necessary to pursue the values that we require in order to continue living. And the problem with the way government is currently structured and pursued both in this state and nationally is that it, it, it gets in, it gets in between that process. It gets in between the individual and their values and says, no, we don't approve of that. We don't like the way that we don't like your values, first of all. And we don't think you're the one who ought to be making these decisions. You need to listen to the, the science. You need to follow the experts. Um, and we're going to insert ourselves between you and that which you want for yourself and decide what it is that you actually need and then ration it out for you in a portion that we think is appropriate. Yeah. See, it, Walt's heard me say this because um, I said this when we were doing uh, doing the show with Bella before and, and Walt and I, Walt was on my channel once before we had a, a nice, very nice conversation about um, critical theory, critical race theory. But uh, one of the, one of the problems that we have is the reality that especially the Republican party is no good at playing hardball when it needs to. And, and for the sake of, um, Wanting to look like they're willing to to be reasonable, the Republican Party very rare, very rarely ever stands up for what its its constituents want, and oftentimes ends up compromising in the name of unity. And yes. we see that, like the left and and not the not liberals. Uh, and this is for my my wonderful friend Carrie, who considers herself a classical liberal, um, or liberal, if you will. But for the, the leftists have, have domineered and dominated the, the Democrat Party. And in the inception of the DFL in Minnesota was Marxist. It, it was literally has Marxist roots. They're really good at not playing the game. They, they, they go for the throat and they don't care who they hurt. And they keep winning. They keep winning. And until Republicans... You know, and that's why, you know, people get mad at me, but Normicons, the rhinos, the, the, the 
the neocons i like okay i know i know I know. no i just i this is the first i love the term normie cons <laughs> that i had never heard that before until oh, you yeah said i it. i you know i'm a wordsmith <laughs> if nothing else um the, the there well it's, i like it better than neocons because everything's neo now neo-nazis neoliberalism right. neo-marxism right. and i was like nah just normie cons you know it's, it's just kill two birds with one stone they all of them are just like we they're just sitting back and they're just like, oh, we got we got to get along. We got to get along. And there's no we got to go through go for the throat. And what we're yeah. seeing, what, like her or not, someone like Marge, Margie Taylor Green, she's going for the throat on things. Right. She she goes for the for the throat. And and you look around and and people in leadership, are they're terrified of her now. I'm not going to mention the name of, of a particular person here in Minnesota who's kind of a, a lightning rod right now within the Republican Party. And he has made some enemies, but he's also made made some headway with people and they they like him because we need more of that. And you and I both um, like uh, uh, like him so much. I forgot his darn name. Uh, Deese. Um, Steve Dace. Yeah. Or Dace. Yeah. Yeah. Dace says the same thing. I'm not playing games. Right. I'm not here. I'm not here to compromise. Uh, And until we get more people like that in office, elected servants who are willing to say, no, I'm here to represent people and I'm not playing the games. I like if I if I only make one term because you don't like me, then that's the way it works. Yes. And and that is where we have to be. That's where the Republican Party has to start going. And with Republican Party leadership, those that are that are in caucuses in 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 the House and in the Senate and other places, if they if they're not willing to start talking that way and doing that and not being will, not reaching across the aisle. And, I, and I've said this before publicly, very publicly, cut the cut that side of the House off if we have to like, get, let there be a chasm because. If we if we're willing to compromise, they're going to keep moving further to the left and we're going to have to move further to the left to compromise with them. And I'm not talking about going hard right. Don't that's not what I'm talking. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, no, traditional conservative principles, because they represent every ethnicity and every culture in the state of Minnesota, which is why Mike Murphy won the endorsement of the, the Hmong community. It's the first time in the history of the state of Minnesota that the Hmong have stepped outside of endorsing a Democrat. Yeah, I saw that. There's there's a lot to unpack there in in what you said. So I'll respond to it just by... I appreciate you saying it that way. Normally people just say, that sounded like a bunch of gobbledygook. Can you... <laughs> I'll, I'll respond by kind of presenting my philosophy of public service, right, for, for lack of a better term. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You have to be willing to do this in such a way that if the value you're presenting is not what people want, like if I'm going to lose either now or in a future election, because I stood on what I believe and because I said what was true um, and because I did the right thing, if, if I'm going to lose for doing that, so be it. That's the judgment of God, right? Like the, the notion that I'm going to determine what, I do or say based upon whether or not I think it's going to get me elected or keep me elected in the event that I get in there, um, rather than prioritizing what is true, what is righteous, what is good, what is proper. Um, to me, that's the single problem uh, that Republicans in particular, but politicians across the board have had is there's, it's too much consideration of politics as a career You know, which is not to say that we don't need people who know how to do this to continue doing it for some period of time. But it is to say that if if that's your goal, if that's your primary, that I'm just going to do this for as long as I can, uh, regardless of whether or not I'm actually able to affect what is good and and stand on what is right, um, then you've got you've got things backwards, you've got things upside down. And the but and here's the the good news though, I wouldn't be doing this. If I thought that what I have to offer and what I believe and the things that I'm going to say were going to make me lose or that they were bad for the Republican Party or that there was no future for conservatism in this state, 
I firmly believe that we can win by doing what I just said. Right. We can, we can win right. by right. telling the truth. You know, right. we can win by standing on righteousness. Um, because yes. I think there's a lot of people who are waiting for that. And we talked about leadership earlier. That's what leadership is. It's, it's the, and I'll avoid saying certain names too, but there's a, a conventional wisdom amongst conservatives in this state that follows the polling, right? So you look at an issue like, for instance, vaccination, they'll look at an issue like vaccination and they'll say, well, you know, 65% or whatever the number was of Minnesotans have been vaccinated. Therefore, you're on the wrong side of this issue if you're coming out being skeptical of the vaccine or if you're coming out being skeptical of public health authorities. You're on the wrong side of that issue. You're going to lose. I don't think that's true, number one. I, I, I don't think that it follows that just because somebody has taken a vaccine that they're wholly bought into the entire narrative that the government is putting out um, regarding public health. But then number two, just because the just because the people are on the wrong side of an issue today doesn't mean that's where they're going to stay. Look at how much you talked about the leftward drift. Look at how much the Overton window has shifted to the left. Over oh, the see, now you past, open up that door. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 shifted to the left massively in the past 15 years. So that tells you where the people are at today is not necessarily where they're going to be tomorrow. And what's going to determine where they are tomorrow is the leadership that is in front of them. The left has led the populace and the electorate to the left. We can lead them back to the right. All you have to do is be willing to lead. And the inherent advantage that we have is that unlike the left, we're right. See, that's the thing is the, and this is one more distinction I'll make, and then I'll, I'll let you, uh, take, take the reins back. Uh, no, it's, that's why I had you on. I, I worked all day. So I, you know, you just, <laughs> you just talk, I'll just sit here and drink what is an adult beverage, but looks like it's coffee. Sure. Um, everything's backwards, right? And, and you, you could say that about a lot of things, but one of the ways in which it applies is that the Democrats, whenever they get power, they put the pedal to the metal and they go as extreme as they possibly can. And then Republicans, when we get power, which we are about to, at the very least, we're about to take total control of the legislature. And there's a very good chance that we're finally, after decades, going to get the governor and get all these statewide constitutions. Are, are, you, are you willing to say right now that you really believe that we're going to take the Senate? Yeah. Keep the House. I mean, we have no. the Senate. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Keep the Senate. Flip the House. And we're going to unseat walls. I th I think so. The last one is the one that's the most iffy because that's the redistricting nightmare. I believe the redistricting nightmare was done to keep walls in office. Maybe. Um, but here, here's the thing though, is that we've got, like I said before, we have op unprecedented opportunities. Um, you've got a, a president who is just the worst. I mean, ever we've never had a president this bad. Um, the, the economy is terrible prices of everything are up and they're not going to go back down. Um, you, you've got this situation internationally, which I know is, is a, as a, a thing that you have a particular take on that would take us down a rabbit hole that we probably don't want to go down. Um, <laughs> so you've been paying attention. Yeah, I've been paying attention. Um, you've seen the fire. Yes. But. <laughs> <laughs> what what I'm getting after is, and the the other thing is, is you've got with this gender insanity, uh, what you got going on with Leah Thomas, um, all of those suburban well, this video just got demonetized. <laughs> all all of those suburban moms, and uh, the you know the people who were upset about Trump's mean tweets, all of and then you go into the city and uh, all the black folk, um, all the urban folk who. Are, are we're are stuck in those kind of traditional Democrat talking points about how Republicans are mean and don't like them. They are being confronted with an assault against their children on, on the issue of education. You got Minneapolis teachers who've been on strike now for two weeks on the issue of, of women's sports, girls sports and gender insanity. I mean, there's a real opportunity here to push back and to, to upset the Democrat control that has been going on in this state for some time. But to go back to my point about what we do when we get that power, traditionally conservatives and Republicans have been very hesitant to do anything with power once they get it.
because they're they're proceeding under the mistaken premise that in order to keep power as a conservative, you have to be moderate. And what they'll do is, and you wait, you wait. If we do this, if we take all three legs of the stool, if we do that, you will hear the argument that we need to be moderate in order to keep the power we had. And they'll point to the Democrats and say, well, they were really extreme and see what happened to them. We don't want to do that. We don't want to be really extreme or else the people are going to kick us out too. And that is complete and utter nonsense. It's exactly the reverse. We want to, we want to put the pedal to the metal. We want to take it as far as we possibly can. And this is why the reason why Democrat extremism gets rejected is because the Democrats are wrong. They're wrong and they're evil and they're on the wrong side of every issue. And when they put the pedal to the metal, things get worse. That's why we're in the situation that we're in right now. We have the opposite situation. We are right. We are standing on what is true. What we propose is actually good for the electorate. And so if we put the pedal to the metal, people are going to stand up and cheer and elect us back to, into office in perpetuity. So that, that's what conservatives need to realize and what Republicans need to realize is that you have to actually believe. And, and, and it's, it's extremely frustrating to me, as you can tell, because a lot of us, you know, we claim we're Christians, right? Well, do you actually believe this stuff? Like, do you believe that you're on the side of God? Do you believe that what you're saying is true? Do you believe that what you're standing up for is righteous? Because if you believe those things, then you should proceed with the confidence that it's going to work. Right? I'm about to get black. <laughs> what was that? I'm about to get black. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. I was like, what does he mean by that? <laughs> See, I can only say that when I have you on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, see, like you people, now you know I'm not the only one. And by the way, just so you guys know, Walter and I also share some strong theological affiliations. Yeah. I'm, prob I'm probably a little bit more reformed than Walter, but. But uh, we have a lot of the same, which we discovered all through just conversation. It wasn't like I knew that it was it's just this is see, this is why I like having Walt on, because people don't know how to deal with this. They 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 freak out when I have a Catholic on. Walter really throws people in for a tailspin on this. So, hey, so so let me we have this question. I want you to answer Troy's question. So what local cities will you be representing? So the district is house district 30 a, and it includes Rockford township. This is all in Wright County, the Northeastern portion, Rockford township, Hanover, St. Michael, Albertville, which is where I live and much of Otsego. There's a little chunk of Otsego on the Eastern side that is, is on highway 101 and along the Mississippi river that belongs to 30 B that'll be represented by Paul Novotny, assuming he prevails, which he probably will. Um, so the rest is me. It's not a coincidence that it's called Wright County, by the way. Yeah. We make that joke all the time. We are in fact, right. Um, uh, so we have, we have this comment right here. Yes, yeah, Dems are on sinking sand. Many are craving righteous leadership. Yep, absolutely. So, all right. So here, here's one. Well, I, I've got people in my audience who, who are not Christian, but they're they are liberty minded. Some of them are libertarians. Some of them are are classically conservative. Some of them are classical liberals. Um, but they're atheist. Sure. And they're saying, well, okay wonderful like you share some of my views but damn it you're you, you you well that's just the way they talk you know and like you have to bear with me <laughs> i didn't say it the way they would have said it but um you 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 and your christianity like you're trying right. it sounds like you're trying to 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 bring your religion into this sure and, yes oh, yes i am <laughs> absolutely and now let's Let me talk about finish playing devil's advocate. <laughs> okay, all right. Darn That's you! Right. Like, so, so how can you how can you functionally represent me, right? Who's not a Christian, or you know, or maybe I'm I'm all religious. Maybe I'm not quite a full fledged atheist, but I'm kind of all religious. Maybe I 
Carrie, Carrie and I and some of the others that are watching have a, a friend who, who is openly gay, who hosts a program, but he's found himself, and Carrie will know immediately who I'm talking about if she's still watching, who's found himself walking away from leftism right. and finding himself far more attracted to the conservative party. And I say conservative party as in not the, the political party, but just that kind of that conservative party mentality. Sure. Being far more, you know, how do you represent that log cabin, log cabin Republican, if you will? How do you Fantastic. represent that person? How do you represent the conservative atheist? Well, OK, first of all, I think we need to acknowledge because this is one of the things that I run into quite a bit, even you know, before at, just as a city council member here in Albertville dealing with constituents. Oh, who, see, he's a career politician, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, on the left. Um, who they'll they'll come up with something along the lines of, you know, you don't represent everyone will be the trite little sentiment that'll get spat out. Um, and I always find that fascinating because is that do I get to use that one? Like at, I'm I'm represented by Amy Klobuchar. She's a senator in my state who goes to Washington, D.C. to represent me. Do you I get to play that card? Sympathy cards to Walter. Uh, or your messages of sympathy for that to Walter here at his um, Walter at Hudson for Minnesota dot com. Please um, express your condolences to him for for that. But you see what I'm getting after here? It's the idea that what well, we, we lost a, all of our all of our watchers. As soon as you mentioned Amy Klobuchar, my view count dropped. <laughs> what, what, what do you what do you mean by by represent? Um, because right. if if what you mean is agree with you about everything well then i guess anytime you you're represented by somebody who is of the other party um, or of the other side then you're not being represented but i'll say this specifically when it comes to the the example you mentioned of of somebody who is an atheist or somebody who is part of the lgbt community uh, who, you know, they get me and they Google some of the things I've said and they go, oh, geez, how am I, how are you representing me? And the answer is this, I'm the only one, not me specifically, but somebody like me, we are the only type that can represent you. The only type, you know why? Because our position is that you own you. Our position is that you are in charge of your life. Our position is that you cannot be compelled to affirm my beliefs and I cannot be compelled to affirm yours. So the way that I represent you, even though we disagree about some fundamental things about God and marriage and gender or whatever it is, is that under the governance that I want to bring to bear, you still get to believe those things and live your life accordingly. I'm not going to stop you from being who you are. I'm not going to demand that you affirm what I believe, but I'm simply going to prevent you and everybody else from demanding that I affirm what you believe. It's truly live and let live. That's what the left had told us they wanted. They were lying. In actuality, they wanted to set up a scenario where through state compulsion, they could demand, and now corporate compulsion as well, they could demand that you affirm and celebrate everything that they believe. And if you if you refuse to, if you say, no, I've got my own beliefs, I want to live my life according to my own values, then they call you a bigot and a racist and a homophobe and a this and a that, and they want to punish you. They don't want you to be able to live. They want to take food off your table and watch your children starve because you disagree with them. That's the type of people that that we're finding ourselves fighting against in these political battles. And so You're my position applause. my position would be that I I am I and those who think like me and those who stand for the values that I hold are the only types of people who can represent you regardless of the perspective. You're getting applause. That's you nice to that? hear. See, yeah, you, I told you. Yeah. You tell the truth, you stand on what's righteous and good. People and like Troy, and, and Troy who asked and Troy asked who asked, you know, what cities you'll be representing says, nice. That's where I am. Oh, Thanks. perfect. So, Great. Troy, please, uh, since you're in his area, if you have any social media accounts, Twitter or 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 fake book or any any of the others that are out there, share this, please. Right now and for later, 
And Lori, I love Lori. She's amazing. She says, Walter, you definitely have my condolences. Well, we're all in that boat together, aren't we? If we live yes, in Minnesota. Yes, yes we so. are. And Troy, Troy, I'm assuming he's talking about uh, Senator Klobuchar says, and she's a traitor. And um, I, I don't necessarily dis- disagree with that. Um, boy, I want to. Oh, boy. Uh, last time we did this, when we recorded, I said, I want to say this carefully. You made the smart aleck comment that you really like it when that happens because, you know, I'm about to say something. <laughs> yes. Um. What's it going to be? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are. Thanks for filling that dead space because this is going to be. This, is gonna be uh, this you're really giving birth to this one. There's some labor pains. Yeah, there is some labor pains here. Plot. Look, you are going to find yourself. Well, let's just be honest. I'm going to throw some names out there. You All are right. going to run afoul of the Dowds and and the Gazelkas. And, I, and it, the, the, But you, you're going to. You're going to. Because of the things that you're saying, and 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 I, it, <laughs> you're not going to be popular because even if you get caucused with the right group, whether it be the new House conservatives or or the regular caucus, whatever it might be, I know you well enough to know that you're not going to be the guy who's going to sit back and not rock the boat. It's well, that, gonna be it's gonna be difficult because you're gonna be surrounded by the Normicons. So here let, let's talk about that because I think it's really important to have this conversation now. I do too. That's why I brought it up. I just tried um, to bring it up very carefully before I get down there so that people don't feel like they're surprised by what happens um once I get there. You know, as as you well know, you know, I I've done, I done a podcast with Jeremy Munson for a long time. Um, Mm -hmm. we, we haven't done it in a while because both of us had some electoral things pop up. Um, he's, he's, I don't know what Jeremy's doing. Right. Hey, by Uh, the way, nudge, nudge, hint, hint, push, push. If you could help me, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind talking to him. Oh, you want to? Okay. Yeah, sure. No, he's, he, uh, I, I know for a fact he's looking to do, um, I will connect those dots. Did you just let me in with the media? In a positive way, I hope. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh. Um, but yeah, so I just disclaimer, disclaimer, Walter did not mean that the way we talk about the media normally. I I obviously am on good terms with Jeremy Munson and very much appreciate what he and the New House Republican Caucus um have been doing. I uh, am friends with Jake Dusenberg and Tony Lalonde, and I think Bill Paulson considers me a friend. I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Um, those are sometimes the best friends that, that said, that said, I don't necessarily subscribe to precisely the same tactical and strategic, uh, plan that those guys have implemented in terms of how they've tried to get things done. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say what they've done is wrong or that they shouldn't have done it. Um, but I, as you well know, TC. I'm a guy who has to make my own judgments. Um, I need to see things for myself and analyze things for myself. And I don't want to go into this with the presumption that I can't convince the Kurt Doubts and the Paul Gazelkas and you know the whoever else, whatever other name you want to throw out there, that what I've talked about thus far is is the right way to go. I think I can make a compelling case. Now I'm not naive. I don't I don't I don't believe that it's going to come like they're just going to jump on board and be like, "Oh, you're so good at explaining things, Walter. Let's do it your way." Like I don't think that's what's how things are going to go down. Um but I think it's important to give it a shot. I think it's important to to make the best case to the broadest audience possible and then see where the chips fall, where the cards lie. If it turns out after making the case in the best way I know how, um, people show their colors and I'll, I'll make my judgments based on that and we'll see what direction things go. Um, but it, I think it's a little bit arrogant and presumptive to just assume that I know exactly how things work down there and exactly the best way to go about trying to get things done and I should split off and become my own caucus or, or whatever the tactic is. Uh, I, I want to get a lay of the land, do a little research, 
make a have a little experience with trying to persuade people before I decide to go off on on some sort of um, unique strategic bent. Will you? Will you? Right now, right here, here, here it comes. Um, will you say right now that you will adhere so strictly to the Constitution that if if a bill comes before you that you that you personally believe is a violation of the constitution that no matter what your caucus if you end up caucusing that no matter what your caucus does or 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 what leadership says will you say without any equivocation that you will not support such a bill and will you if if you find yourself in a position where oh i did support this and now i realize i was wrong will will you admit that publicly and and take measures to correct that well i certainly hope to never be in the second position <laughs> of, well, uh, right but but <laughs> but well, let's, let, let's just be honest there are right. things that come up like oh hey sure. this is really good we're going to give you the nuts and bolts of it or not the nuts right. and bolts we're going to give you the surface of it and and this is and this is what it is Support yeah, I mean, this because we got your back, and then all you right. find out, like, it granted, this happens more at the federal level, but sure. I mean, look at what Pelosi just pulled last week. I mean, what was that thing like 450 million pages? And she wanted everybody to be ready to vote, <laughs> vote on it like six hours later. That still hap- that happens in Minnesota, too. Yeah, I mean, um, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to draw myself into a box that doesn't allow me to apply my judgment in the moment, but I'll, I'll, I'll commit to some principles. Okay. In principle, if somebody's asking me to vote for something and they're not giving me a chance to read and understand it, not just skim it, but read it and understand it, then I'm not, I'm going to vote. No. Like if I, if I don't know what I'm voting for, the answer is no. Um, if it's something that, as you say, I sincerely hold to be an unconstitutional provision. The answer is no, I'm not voting for it in a story. And will you, and will you come out publicly and explain that ahead of the vote? Sure. Why not? I, I know. I, I can't think of a good reason why you not. didn't. You, yeah, right. You, you <laughs> didn't know I was going to ask that question because I don't, I'm not normal. Well, I mean, so as I've I think told. it's, I think it's, uh, and I'm not a big fan of them nowadays, but uh, Justin Amash um, is somebody who I've admired in the past. And I think he was doing that. Like he would come out, I don't know if it was before the vote, it might've been after the vote, but he would come out with these detailed explanations of every vote. You know, I voted this way on this, like, and I think it even got down. I think he may have excluded like, you know, kind of trivial parliamentary things, but anything of substance, he would come out on social media and say, this, this is why I voted this way. This is why I voted that. Um, and within within the realm of you know practicality of, of physically having the time to do that, I, I would certainly be more than willing to do that. I think that's important. It's important for people because if if you're going to be a representative, if you're going to mm-hmm. serve in representative government, then the only way for people to know whether or not you are representing them is if they understand not just what you did, but why you did it. Right. And that's that's one of the reasons why I've been asked by by other people um, whether or not I will uh, pursue or support roll call votes for for bills. And my intuitive answer to that is, yeah, of course. Why 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 would I ever not want people to know where their representatives, including me, stand on any given issue? That's the only way this works, right? The only way representative government works is if you know how you are being represented. And that's my priority, not because I, I think what elected officials lose track of is that you're going to have one day you're not going to be an elected official anymore. Some of them might not want to admit that to themselves, but the truth of the matter is one day you're just going to you're going to go back into the rabble, right? Like you're just going to be one of the people again, and you're going to have to live under the consequences of what you've done and not just in terms of the laws you've passed, but the institutional structure that you have left behind. And so if you've supported an institutional structure that obscures the reality of what government is doing uh, and does not provide transparency and does not provide representation and deliberation, 
then you're going to have to live with that when you go back. Right. When, and, and as your kids and grandchildren grow up, yep. they're going to have to live with that. Mm -hmm. Having having that insulation between the people and the oligarchy, because that's what you'll be leaving them, um, that you've had a part in setting up. Is that a good enough answer? <laughs> no, no, it's it. You answered you answered by answering, which is, is nice. It is really weird. Uh, are you sure you're a politician? Like, I'm not you know, it's funny. Somebody somebody called me a politician and they didn't even mean it as an insult um, the other day. And I and I was like, I guess I am. I suppose that is what has happened. Yes. I, I do think it's funny. Sometimes you'll see people campaign and they'll be like, I'm not a politician. I'm a this, I'm a that, whatever it is. I'm a business owner. I'm a father. Look, you're running for office. You're a politician. And I think, well, that well, no, 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 I'm not going to let that one go. I okay. think there's a difference, Walter. I don't think you're a politician. I think you're a statesman. Oh, how kind. No, <laughs> you know what? Way to ruin a good moment. <laughs> no, I understand this is what you're why we to can't say. have nice shows. I understand no, what you're, you're trying you're, to say. No, I but, see, it. but you're a, you're a, you're a state you're a statesman because you you're looking at this not from the the perspective of what do i need to do to get office or stay in office but from the perspective of what is the best thing for the republic even here at at the state level what's the best thing for the republic and and that's why you're answering the questions the way that you do so I, you know, I, I realize that the person who said it is meant it as a compliment, but I think ultimately th the the best way to look at that is to say, no, I'm a statesman. Well, I think statesman. I know not, nobody understands the term anymore. Well, what I was going to say is I don't think it's something that you get to call yourself, right? That's kind of like saying, you know, I'm handsome or, or you know, I'm intelligent. Like a, sta a statesman, the, the, the implication behind that uh, it's a it's a value judgment. It's a judgment of the the quality that you're bringing to the table. Um, certainly, I would aim to be worthy of being called that, but I'm not going to call myself that. Uh, the The reason why I don't shy away from the term politician is because I think just like the term libertarian, um, and to a lesser extent conservative, we need to reclaim these terms because they've been polluted. The reason why people inherently distrust politicians is because politicians tend to use their persuasive and rhetorical skills to do things that are evil, wrong, and self-serving. But that doesn't mean that politicians as a category are bad. It just means that we need better ones. Like we need politicians who have those persuasive rhetorical skills in order to to bring people along and to get them to vote the way they want to, them to vote and and take the hills that they want to take. But they need to be people of good character who are pursuing good ends and are using those skills to achieve good ends. Um, if we have that, then politician can be less of a dirty word than it is today. All right. I'll grant you that one. See, this is why there again, this is why we can't do this very often. Why this is why we don't get asked to fill in more often on other shows, because we we just pew, we go off on our own tangents and do say anything. It's what I've always done. Anytime I, I, I anytime I go in, when I had my own show for three years on Twin Cities News Talk, that's all it was. It was two hours of, I every every segment. I rarely covered more than one topic on a segment, because <laughs> you get you get talking about whatever it was, whatever headline, and it's all the deep philosophy behind it for ten minutes, and then you go to commercial. Uh, I I have one of the viewers, and I'm I I want to I want to put her comment up, but her. Her YouTube channel name is would would definitely. I mean, I've, I just checked. We've already been um, limited suitability for ads. So nice, <laughs> nice. So we know we're running to follow the powers that be. And this would probably her name would probably get me demonetized. The video demonetized totally. Uh, but she asks, um, does religion have a part of politics? It it doesn't need it doesn't need to be or it doesn't. I don't. I'm, I'm trying to. It was two comments right after one another, so I'm assuming they're meant to follow. Uh, does religion have to be part of politics? Can I say, oh, I want to answer this one just from my perspective. I don't know that, like, for the for a committed Christian, well, 
Okay, and then and then she added, conservative doesn't mean Christian. Right, absolutely. I don't necessarily disagree with that. From my perspective, a conservative doesn't have to be Christian. doesn't have to be. Yeah. Um, but it, it, try being an atheist and separating your atheism from your politics. I just don't think it's possible. That doesn't mean that an atheist can't be conservative, but an, an, an atheist being let's consider a jehovah's witness or a mormon like you cannot if you adhere to a a ideological position theologically and philosophically it it is part and parcel of who you are right it doesn't necessarily i i do not ascribe to the ideal that many christians do that i'm a like everything everything about me is completely 100 percent totally christian because um there are times where I can look at something just from a pragmatic perspective and say, okay, constitutionally, this is just wrong when, when we're talking about elected servants. Mm-hmm. Constitutionally, this is just wrong. But I'm going to f- still be filtering the decisions that I make are going to be, f- be filtered through my worldview. And no one can separate those things. You just You just cannot separate those things. And there again, that doesn't mean that a conservative cannot be an atheist. I mean, look, look at uh, Rand. She wasn't ostensibly 100% conservative, but she was definitely far more conservative than than others of her of her mindset. Right. And she she would definitely not be voting for the Dems. I'll tell you that. And and so the same the same person knit. Uh, says, if I want a sermon, I'll go to church. I want a political leader who represents my right as a citizen. Precisely. And so, Walt, what's what's your perspective? I know you were nodding and saying right to, to some of what I was saying, but in your own words, can there again, this goes back to how do you represent these people? And I would I would I would echo what you said. I can more accurately represent you, more uh, rationally represent you than a person who is on the left ever could. Right. Yeah. So uh, the, the, to the comment specifically, if, if I want a sermon, I'll go to, to church or I'll go to a pastor. Um, you're getting the sermon no matter what. The left is nothing but sermons all day long. That's all you're seeing is sermons from the left about what's right, about what's wrong, about what you can do, about what you can't, about how terrible a person you are if you disagree with them. Um, we get nothing but moral conviction, moral conviction proclamation and moral condemnation from the left all the time. The sermon is always going to be there. The question is not whether or not there will be a sermon in politics. The question is what will be the value system that informs uh, that, that sermon and what will be the value system that informs the policy that comes out of that sermon. Exactly. And, and, and she says, great, we can be friends. (laughs) And, see that's what i want people to understand uh next uh, well two weeks from now on my monday night musings i'm going to be having uh my friend pirate on pirate is a a, and and i i use i say it euphemistically he's a devout atheist but we share a lot of the same the same uh, uh philosophical when it comes to political positions we say we share a lot of the same philosophical view it's why i can sit down with a roman catholic who doctrinally and theologically, we don't have a lot in common. I can sit down with them and have that same conversation on principles and, and whatnot. And I can even sit across the table from um, a Mormon. And and if we're talking religion and doctrine, we're going to have some very hard conversations. But when it comes to traditionalism, when it comes to uh, conservative principles, when it comes to the Constitution, we can agree. On a lot of things. And and we can join in that fight together. And that's the one thing the left cannot do. They cannot that's right. do it. That's they, right. they absolutely cannot. You have to adhere to the leftist, Marxist, regressive agenda, which means you have to abandon everything that you believe as a Christian, if you're a Christian. You have to. Because if you don't, you're the enemy, and they will make sure everyone knows it. And and which is why much of the church in the West has abandoned politics and politicking altogether. Period. 
Look at the last two years. I, I have a post on Facebook. I won't share it right now because there will be a lot of Christians who get really mad at me. But uh, it, it uh, they they will absolutely fundamentally and foundationally demand that you destroy your your moral convictions, right? To to ha- to be accepted. Carrie talks about this on her program a lot, and this there again, Carrie. I, I hope you and Walter can connect. Um, just not not to talk about his campaign, but just to talk about wh- what he's walked through and where he's come from. I would love to see him on your show. Um, I'll make that happen if I can. I'll facilitate it. Uh, Carrie, you talk about this. You can never distance yourself enough from wrong think for the leftist. And the first place they go is to your religion. And what does your religion say? Carrie has said this, and Walter, you and I have talked about this before. Leftist has become cult leftists have become cultists it's an orthodoxy and that's a little bit of what we talked about when you were on my show the first time was the reality of the religious aspect and we need to get some time we need to sit back down and and complete that conversation to talk about the very religious reality of leftism and marxism and 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 wokeism here in the state of minnesota and other places but carrie's nailing it and that's what our show is all about, is the reality of the religious aspects of especially the left, but even the far right. Well, let's 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 go back a little bit and talk about why it is, because I think I think this gets overlooked a lot, especially by ironically conservatives and Christians. We really overlook why it is that you can that, that we can get along with people who don't agree with us. We can get along um, with with atheists. We can get along with with people um, who who have different doctrinal views and different theological views, and we can come together on the the a moral worldview of how life ought to be lived on Earth. The reason why that is is because the Judeo Christian perspective, the Judeo-Christian worldview, and and uh, to an extent even, even beyond that, the, the kind of Western secular ideas that have been formulated tangential to that world are all born out of an observation and an acknowledgement of reality. In, in Christian theological terms, we, re- we refer to it as general revelation. The specific revelation Um, divine revelation, that's scripture. General revelation is everything else. It's what you can see, what you can touch, what you can taste, what you can smell. It's the real world. It's science. That's general revelation. And because our morality, our Judeo-Christian morality, is born out of our observation of general revelation, we can find ourselves in agreement with somebody who is an atheist because it turns out they live in creation too, whether they want to acknowledge where it comes from or not, right? Um, and so it's really what it has come down to, especially now with the nature of the left and the way that they are and how, how extreme they've taken their rejection of reality is it's really come down to two teams, one team, which is defined by its adherence to what is true and what is real. And another team that insists upon imposing a fantasy and enforcing it with inquisition. We are dealing with an inquisition. We are dealing with inquisitors, as you say, people who are going to enforce their doctrine, and if you don't agree with them, they are going to punish you specifically for not agreeing with them. Not for anything that you do, but for what you think, what you believe. They, and they're going to, and, and if you try to stay under the radar, as a lot of us have, a lot of people have, they've tried to stay under the radar, they just want to go to work, I don't want to be involved in politics, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep everything quiet and just live my life, keep my faith private, keep my political ideas private. That's not going to work. They will get around to you. They're coming around. They're going to make, they're going to make it to where you must declare allegiance to their faith, to their fantasy. And if you refuse to do so, you will be punished. You will have your ability to pay for things turned off. You know, you will have your ability to, to have a job and put food on your children's table taken away. They're going to punish you for not accepting their view of things. And so that's where we find ourselves. And in a sense, you know, Steve Dace was making this case recently. In a sense, this is an extremely good thing. We find ourselves with an unprecedented opportunity to strike a blow for righteousness 
Because what, what, pot, what greater advantage could you have than being on the side of reality? Right. Um, and how, how easy should it be to convince people that it's a good idea to do that, which they know to be true. All, all we need to do is get people to the point where they, where they start to realize that they have to pick a side and they have to be vocal about it. This whole thing of, I'm going to keep my head down and keep neutral and not say anything lest I be boycotted or fired or, you know, suffer some sort of social censure Th that attitude needs to go away because they will come around to you and they will not allow you to remain. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that I wish people would, would understand is that you, the thing that gets thrown at us the most are things like, Oh, well, what about the separation of church and state? And, and that's, in particular, it's a question for for Americans, nor, members of the Republic of the United States. Um, but it's something for other people in other uh, other places around the world. Um, it's the only the only time the only time anyone demands that that separation happen is with Christianity. And, and right. when I say Christianity, I mean. Like Orthodox, not the big O Orthodox, but the the little or, or little O Orthodox Christianity. That's the only time. It's the that's the only right. time. It, that's um, it. That, it. No one, no one demands that the Muslim give up their faith when they walk into office. No one it. demands that. You got it. No one demands that the Jewish, the the Hebrew person walks. You know, the religious Hebrew person give up their faith. Well, unless they they happen to be a conservative Jew, right? But. Right. But it it's the only time. No one demands that the atheists give up their atheism when they're holding office. Right. It's only Christianity, and we have to understand that it the, the totality of of the meaning of that is that they recognize. And I love my atheist friends, but they recognize that the Christian who is con, convicted, and and people have to understand that for Christians, the term convicted is not a negative. A person, a Christian who holds to their convictions is hard to sway. Yeah. Very, very hard to sway. And that's the person who will go out and, and say, like, no, I'm going to vote against X, Y, and Z because of the recogn recognition, recognizing the, the yes, there you, go. you know what? I, it's, I'm tired. <laughs> we, we recognize that there are some things that that link into the constitutional nature of our republic yeah that come from as as our founding fathers recognized nature's god that's right and those things we cannot separate them and one of the reasons we have found ourselves in the constitutional morass that we have been in now for 150 years let's just be honest and it's been progressing even in, even quicker one of those reasons is because people have been willing to separate their their religious philosophical principles from how they how they govern and that is incredibly dangerous for the christian yeah well i i just don't i don't think i don't think anybody actually does that I think they're fooling themselves into believing that that's what they're doing. You're always, whatever choice you make agreed is always governed by the principles that you actually hold. And that's how you know whether or not you actually hold them, right? That's how you know whether or not you actually believe it's when you're tested. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's when there's a cost Great. you pay for, for standing on, on what you profess. That's when we find out whether or not you actually believe. Um, but look, I, I think, the, the, and again, it's important to recognize why it is because you're right. The only group, the only people who have to truly and fully separate their religion from their civic engagement are Christians. Everyone else is welcome at the table. You know, you can come and you can bring your, like you said, your Muslim perspective, your Hindu perspective, your Buddhist perspective. Your not only, perspective. not only are you welcome, it's almost like you, uh, they throw a red carpet down for you. Yes. And, and you're given even more voice because of that. Right. And what they'll say, what the Marxists will say, because it sounds plausible coming from them, is they'll say, well, you guys are the majority culture. And this is about power dynamic. And this is about giving a voice to the oppressed. 
um, by virtue of the fact that they're the minority. But that's not it. That's not it. That might be part of their rationale and, and part of how they justify it. But in reality, the reason why the Christian is uniquely forbidden from bringing his faith to bear in the public discourse is because our what we have to say and the values that we have to present are self-evidently correct, and they cannot be argued with. When, every other worldview, when it comes to the table and presents its case, it's with the qualifier of, in my opinion, in my opinion, this, that, or the other thing. According to me, this, that, or the other thing. When we, when as Christians, when we bring our world to view to bear, it is this is the word of the Lord God, Most High, to the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right, story. Which, which is ultimately, uh, let's be honest, which is ultimately really how a lot of them, by them I mean the leftists, respond to. They're 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 bringing the word of their God in, but it just but, happens. It just happens to be. It just happens to be a earthly god of some you, sort, an idol you, of some sort. You'll appreciate this comparison. You're right, but they're bringing the word of their god in the same way that Pharaoh's mystics threw down their staffs and they also turned into snakes, right? Like Moses threw down his staff first and it turned into a snake. And then the magicians of Pharaoh's court threw down their staffs. And their staffs also turned to snakes. Yeah, we just lost all the atheists. But but what happened next? Moses' I staff swallowed, swallowed the Swallowed, yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Our ideas swallow the others. Our ideas claim victory over every other idea. That's why they have to censor us. Because if we say what we believe, it obliterates every other idea. It it our which is which which is why we can foundationally and fundamentally stand next to a conservative atheist and have this conversation. And not when I say win, not win over the atheist necessarily, but where we can stand next to him and, and we can win the fight is because the atheist is going to ride along with us and go, I can't argue with this. Well, and look, I'm the, the, again, the value that I bring to the atheist who I represent or the atheist who's, who's just listening and, uh, as, to this conversation the value that I bring is my the supremacy of my worldview is no threat to you. It's not right. because I, I am not advocating for a world where you don't get to be an atheist. I'm right. also not advocating for a world where my the my faith is enforced through law, right? right. Like your capacity to live your life according to your own values, according to your own worldview will remain intact. And guess right. what? That's all. It's not just true for the atheist. And I, I don't want to compare these things, but it's not just true for the atheist. It's also true for the Marxist. It's also true for the LGBT member of society. It's true for everyone. Like you still get to be all of those things under my nirvana, right? Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to prevent you from being a Marxist. You want to be a Marxist, be a Marxist. You want to join a commune, convince other people to get together with you and put all your property in common and live like communists. Totally fine. That's on you. But what you don't get to do is impose that on me. Right. Just, we just are like, literally I'm not impose my thing on you. You don't right. get to impose your thing. on We me. are literally the thing that's standing between all of you and the, 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 the dystopian future that the left would have for you. Whereas where you don't get to think what you want to think, believe what you want to believe, say what you want to say, which is why you need to align yourselves with us. Even if you disagree with us foundationally and fundamentally on a, on a, on a philosophical religious per, re, level. And, and, and for those people out there, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. Shut up. It, it is a religion. Our Lord says it's a religion. <laughs> so it that's our religion is it, it, genuine and i'm not going to use a no true scotsman fan, fallacy but genuine christian religion stands and stands back and says i'm going to get out of the way you believe whatever you want to believe i'm going to still fight for you right we're going to liberate the oppressed that's right and, and 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 that's that's why i would love all of my my POC brothers and sisters in Christ to start voting the way the the way that best and most accurately represents them. Vote for guys like Walt. Vote vote for those kind of people. Uh Lori Lori says 
even though she spelled her name wrong, Lori says, I think you and Carrie and Walter need to do a segment together. I'm afraid it wouldn't be a segment. <laughs> it, would, it, would, it, it would, this has already gone an hour and 13 minutes, which is more than I, I mean, I knew it would go longer, but I was trying to not have it go longer. <laughs> and, um, and then we have this comment right here, just when you were ranting and, yeah. uh, and then, and then this one as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, like, and like I say, this, my prayer, which, <gasps> thus, which thus far, which thus far has been answered, um, has been that I, that I say the things that need to be said. Um, and that I find that it be, that it flow, right. That it not be difficult, <laughs> that it not, that I not hesitate. And even, even if that means, and th- I do have these moments, even if that means that at like three o'clock in the morning, I wake up and I'm like, wait, what did I say? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, was that, was that really wise of me to, to go off on that particular? Um, but then when I, I wake I up, I do that every single time I put a video up every time yep but then when i wake up at nine and i and i'm you know shock off the sleep and i think about it and i go oh yeah yeah no that was right that was good i'm glad i did that um yeah if anything is gonna if anything's gonna hurt your chances it's the fact that you're on my show so well not what you said just the fact that you you were on my show yeah well i'm willing to risk it (laughs) you know i mean there's 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 no reason there, there's so much like the, and again, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about how the conventional conservative slash Republican political wisdom is to moderate. Another aspect of that is to avoid uh, unnecessarily exposing yourself to scrutiny by doing things like a YouTube live, right? Um, you, you know, you talk about the the folks who are down there in St. Paul being averse to me for one reason or another, probably one of the things I'm going to hear is Walter, why did you tweet that? Or Walter, why did you go on that show? Or Walter, why did you, why did you do a live stream? Why didn't, why didn't you uh, have a more scripted professional polished approach to whatever it is that I, I'm, I'm going to say in any given moment? Like, Cause I'm not scripted or polished or professional. <laughs> well, sure. But no, it's but it's more it's more than it's look, I first of all, I think there are two answers to that, both of which are correct. One that you you want if if you if you have confidence in what you believe and we said this earlier. If you have confidence in what you believe, then you shouldn't have any hesitation in its effectiveness. You should be able to say what you believe to be true and correct and right without fearing that it's going to be picked apart by a bunch of people who are wrong. But number two, and I think th- this is a moment that um, conservatives and Republicans really need to be tuned into. We are, this is a different politics. The, the analogy that I um, think back to is when Nixon and JFK had their television debate for president. That was a Nixon, turning point. People don't understand this. Nixon destroyed him. On the radio. Yep. Well, yeah. On the radio, Nixon destroyed him. On TV, JFK destroyed Nixon. Right. And it was because not because of what he was said no. or what he was saying. It was because it was a change in medium. The mm-hmm. medium had changed, and JFK was the television candidate as opposed to Nixon. In a similar sense, we have experienced a change in medium today. It's been um, much more gradual, but it's no less dynamic. And the it, and it has less to do with optics. Obviously, going from radio to TV, it was all about the visual, right? What we've done is we've gone from legacy media to social media. And in the era of social media, and you're a YouTuber, you understand this, all the successful YouTubers. I don't, I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> all the successful YouTubers. They're successful specifically because they are authentic specifically because you talk about it's a, it's a relationship, not a religion. Successful YouTubers are successful because they develop a relationship with their audience. People feel like they know them. They feel like they're their friend. That's the, the era that we're in now. And so that explains things then as a politician, which unfortunately I must call myself, um, the new, the new, the new politics is such that you have to bring that to bear in your campaign. You can't hide behind the scripted television commercial. 
You can't, you can't walk out onto a set and be like, my name's Walter Hudson and I approve this message because Minnesota needs to be a better place to live. Like that type of trite, obviously scripted garbage isn't going to convince people that you're the guy anymore. You need to be willing to put yourself out there and say, this is what I believe. This is why I believe it. This is my story. And this, this is how I can be of service to you. This is the value that I'm bringing to the table. This is what I'm trying to get after. And you have, you have to be able to defend it authentically in the same way you would if you were sitting across from somebody at a kitchen table or, or at a bar or, or across a fence or wherever you happen to be. Right. Um, and Republicans and conservatives need to get on board with that. And if you're not the type of candidate, if you're not the type of co- incumbent or politician who can handle that sort of authenticity, then you need to make room for people who can. Right. Absolutely. You know, it's it's like our governor who, you know, shows up. You brought it up earlier, but I'm just going to throw it out there and, and we'll we'll wrap it up here uh, within a couple of minutes. Our governor here, uh, Commissar Walls of the People State of Mark Sosota, likes to show up in Ukrainian owned businesses for photo ops now to show that he's aligned with right. all of the Ukrainians in the state of Minnesota. Sure. That massive Ukrainian population. Right. You know, and I'm over here going because there's no Russians in the state of Minnesota. I mean, and what are, what are you saying? And and that's right. that that's that that's that that facade, that yes. veneer of I'm a man of the people. It's exactly what you were talking about is showing up and like oh I, and I endorse this message. That's what he was. That, that's what they do. And 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 quite frankly, that's both parts of the problem here in the state of Minnesota and really across the United States. Is, is that you get that with Republicans and the Democrats. And it's it's just foundationally important for people to understand that it's the rawness and the reality, the grittiness of 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 being willing to speak extemporaneously and off the cuff. Right. Especially for the person who's running for that that office that you that you have to think about. And and so many and the people who have been listening to me for the last couple of years know I'm, I've been beating this home. Well, you've heard me say this. It's the local level. It's the school boards, it's city councils, it's dog catcher, whatever the case might be. That's where it matters. And I don't want a guy that's perfectly polished. I want Joe the plumber to walk in and go, how the hell are we going to fix this shit? (laughs) Excuse my language, but that's just, that's what I want. I want that guy to walk up to the mic and go, I can't vote for this crap. You guys fool crazy. You know, that's just, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. And, and I want the grittiness. And that's what it used to be. When that's the founder's that. vision. I mean, right. they, they, the reason they, they didn't envision, you know, being constantly in session and, you know, uh, c- consistently, um, in session, but always running for office. Right. Yeah. The, it was supposed to be bivocational, you know, like, uh, like, a like the pastor of a small church, like you were, you were supposed to go there, um, once in a while to do the necessary business of government and then go back to your farm. Like that was the vision. And it's turned right. into what it is. And look, you know, we're not going to roll it back uh, anytime soon, but we can immediately adopt the mentality of servant leadership and citizen governance. Uh, and I think we're, we have to in order to f- formulate the the legislative goals and pursue the legislative goals that are necessary to open things back up to the people. Right. Absolutely. And 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 that's. It's just where we need to be. That's that's where we need to be as as a, as a nation. Is we should be focusing on going back to the the farmer who who goes up for a couple of weeks and then comes home, right? And and the constant campaigning uh, needs to go away. It just it just needs to end. And well, you've got a family. I haven't ate dinner yet, so um, I. This is how much I love you, Walt. I did this on an empty stomach. Wow. I know. That's, are, are, are you touched? That's real devotion. I, I know. It's real devotion. Hey, if there's anything that uh, the channel can do to, to help you, I'm like, I'm all the way down here. Like, like, sure. Like not mention you again, if that would help you. Um. <laughs> well, I'll just say, you know, folks can go to Hudson for MN.com. My email is there at the bottom. That's also the website, HudsonForMN.com. I've got much more material there than most candidates tend to have, especially at this stage of their campaign. 
of you know what animates me and wh- where I stand on the various issues. Um, and the look, it's this this is a dirty business, and one of the things that is difficult to um, touch upon is the the financial aspect of it. But I'm telling you, the the way that we communicate that what I'm talking about is the way to go is through contributions, financial contributions. So if, if it's within your ability to help me out in that regard, um, that's the way that we're going to send the signal to the doubts and the gazelkas and everyone else that this is for real. This is serious. Um, this, this is the wave of the future. So if that's within your ability, if it's not, then still go to the website, still check out what I'm doing, still sign up for email updates and all of that. And uh, we can stand shoulder to shoulder in other ways moving forward through this campaign. And and you can share this video. And there are also, there's YouTube now allows you to clip out the parts that you think are really important. So um, all the parts where Walter's talking and I'm just sitting here going like this, that would probably be really helpful. So you can clip those out and share them, but uh, share this out there. Walter, I really appreciate your time. And seriously, if there's anything I can do to, to, to help get the word out, to help you out, I know you're, you're in a pretty tight enclave of conservatism up there in, in Wright County. But um, I want other people to hear this message because I think it'll inspire them. So I really appreciate your time. Go see your family for what's left of the evening and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Appreciate I'm going to connect you with Carrie because Carrie, you would be a perfect fit for her show. Sounds so, good. All right, man, you take it easy. I'm going to do a little bit of a close. You can get out of here. Sure. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. There you have it. Walt is a friend and um, uh, I would love for you guys to go and check him out. Walter at Hudson for uh, Especially if you're in his district, if you know somebody in his district, um, share this with them. Because I'm, I have found out there are people that do don't know about some of these people that are running for office. Um, once again, if you're interested in in coffee, uh, Lori, who's watching, has tried it. Her and her husband argue over who gets to finish off each bag. I just they've told me that. So, uh, if you'd like to try the coffee, let me know. Some others of you have tried it. If you aren't a coffee person but you'd like to get some merchandise, I have some really cool merch. And um, I am willing to ship it to you. So, and and if you've been seeing, I've been sipping out of this 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 mug all night. Uh, and we're gonna have some beanies coming out. We're working on that. So, go check out Walter's stuff and uh, make sure that you are voting your conscience. That's really important right now. If you're a conservative atheist or anything else, we can stand arm in arm, elbows linked together in this fight and move forward. And we can take back the ground that they have tried to take from us and that some of them have taken from us. We can we can win this fight, but it's going to take commitment and it's going to take some intentionality to really be be willing to say and do hard things. So as always, until next time, six Semper. Tyrannus.